and welcome to my channel. I'm so excited to have you here. So today we are going to be doing top MLM fails, which I haven't done one in a while. So I wanted to do one for you guys. So I have collected a bunch of clips and screenshots that you guys have sent me, but also screenshots and clips that I've gotten from certain anti MLM Instagram pages. So I will be linking all of them down below, shouting them out if you want to go check out their Instagram pages. And then if one of their clips are something I'm using in this video, I will just put up their name in the top left or the top right hand corner for you guys. So that's pretty much my intro. Grab your water, grab your tea, grab your coffee. I've just got water today and let's get into today's video. I also want to say if my lips are a little bit blue, I apologize. I just had like a blue slush icy or whatever. You shouldn't have blue slush icies when you're about to film, but here is the first video. Hey, <laughs> Karen. I think that's Karen. We don't actually show our faces on the internet, so it's always hard to tell. I'm here at the troll convention as a staunch anti MLMer. I've been one for years. <laughs> Ever since I failed at my own attempt, it's become my life's purpose to help save others. How do I do it? I find happy, successful people on the internet and yell words like predatory and income disclosure statement. Have I ever changed anyone's mind? No. Okay, so this person said inside the 2021 troll convention with an anti MLMer. So first she says they don't show their faces. Hello, my name is Deanna Mims. You see me, I see you. This is my face. I put it publicly out here, just like many other anti MLMers do. So false. Two, you should also be asking why. There are some people who do that because when I think about it, why do some people feel like they have to hide their face when it comes to speaking out about an MLM? I know a lot of people do that on Instagram, and there's actually even some YouTubers who just do voice voiceovers and don't show their faces. Some just don't, but some are scared to literally show their face. They know if they show their face, they're going to get gaslit. They are going to get manipulated. They're going to have maybe even friends and family around them that are in the MLM, kick them out of their life, be mean to them, be rude to them. So some people don't want to deal with that. So that's that point right there. I know for me, I'm someone who doesn't care as much like to show my face. I don't care if you reach out to me in DMs, but there are other people that mentally, it could be too much for them to have a bunch of MLM knowing their face, being able to track them down and doing all of that when they don't feel as secure. Also, like I said, if they have family and they have friends that are in the MLM, sometimes they stay quiet with their face because they don't want their friends and family to feel as if they're being attacked by them. So maybe ask the question on why are some people scared to do that? Number two, you said, ever since I failed at my own attempt, it's my life purpose to save others. Many people who are anti-MLM um, never joined an MLM. They've never been in an MLM. So that also doesn't apply to a lot of people that are anti-MLM in the world who are in the anti-MLM movement, whether they are on Reddit, YouTube, Instagram, or just in their community, helping people not get trapped into these MLMs. So just because someone fails, it doesn't matter if they failed in your eyes of failing when 99% of people fail in MLMs. And then two, some actually succeeded in their MLMs. So I know someone who is on YouTube right now that you can go and check out. I will show her page right here. She actually made it to the top 1%. Based on my knowledge, she has made lots of money in her MLM. But the thing is, when a lot of people find the facts out or the truth out about MLMs, they don't wanna be involved with them anymore, so they leave. So that's definitely a lot of the reasons why I left my MLM. I didn't leave because I just failed or I didn't succeed or anything like that. I left because I started to do my research. I started to see things like income disclosure statements and just the truth about MLMs. And that's what made me leave because personally, I just couldn't live with myself doing that anymore. And there's nothing wrong with you, you know, if you live your life knowing most of the people under you are going to be scammed, that's you, you do you. But for me, I couldn't deal with that. So I got out and then I just start educating people because I wish that I was educated by someone before I joined my MLM so that I didn't join it and that I didn't do that to other people and take their money and things like that. So that's a big reason why I myself got out of my MLM because I honestly found the facts. So a lot of people don't just become anti-MLM because they have failed in your eyes. They just don't want to be in the MLM anymore. They found out the facts. They have realized the truth. And some have seen that they're just losing money. There's literally 1% chance that they're going to make money. And why keep putting your money into something that you know is most likely not going to make you money. And the last thing that I just wanted to touch on was, have I ever changed 
change someone's mind? No. So she said, have I ever changed someone's mind? That's false. Like it's, it's funny to watch this and it, none of it be factual or based on truth at all because I beg to differ. I would also like to know anyone who's watching this video who is in an MLM, I want you to comment down below if your mind was changed by an anti-MLMer, by Reddit, by YouTube videos, by just talking to someone in DMs that was anti-MLM. I would love to know if so, who helped you? Who helped you get out of your MLM and helped you change your mind? Because for me, I was that person. So yes, anti-MLMers have changed people's minds because I was someone who was in an MLM once and I ran across YouTube videos where I was like, oh my gosh, this person is telling the truth. So guess what? My mind started to change because I was seeing the other side of everything, the different perspective that individuals were giving when they were giving facts and things that weren't based off of hope and dreams like an MLM does. So yeah, lots of people have changed the minds of others or lots of anti MLMers have, especially myself. I get messages all the time that people tell me like, oh my gosh, I'm trying to leave my MLM. What can I do? Like, can you help me leave? Oh my God, thank you so much for like showing me the truth, whatever. So I don't know. I feel like minds are changed, but that's just me. So let's move on to the next one. I just thought that one was funny. Y'all, I keep seeing this whole trend uh, on social where people keep talking about potentially having a shutdown again. It's like all I've been seeing the past few days and obviously COVID has spiked again. It's possible that we're going to have a shutdown again. Let me tell you, I have an opportunity for you to embark on so you will not be unemployed again, okay? This coaching opportunity can pay you like a full-blown business if you treat it like a business. And I will give you all of the tools to get started right, to be in the top 1%, to be at the highest rung of the entire company because I have done it myself. I am an example to you all of what can be done in this business. If I can do it, you can do it, okay? But if you are financially struggling right now, please let me help you. This business gives you 25% commission on top of weekly, monthly, yearly bonuses and residual income. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please DM me. Uh, I didn't like this one mostly because she literally stated if you're financially struggling right now reach out to me and we see this time and time again with MLMs that they try and prey on vulnerable people that's just a thing that happens even if the MLM rep doesn't understand that they're doing that they are doing that because this person is preying on people who are financially struggling and that is a person that is vulnerable that's a person that needs that hope right because with everything that happened with COVID I know a lot of people who are in a situation that they wouldn't have been in if we weren't in a pandemic and a lot of them are looking for something they're looking for something to give them hope and to just help them out during this hard time so when they see someone like you maybe they haven't done their own research on MLMs or maybe they know MLMs aren't that successful but they'll take a chance on you and joining your MLM because they need something they need that hope in their life and I just hate seeing people really go towards individuals who are struggling if you are struggling because of COVID let me tell you right now an MLM is not going to help you. I'm actually really excited to see Beachbody's income disclosure statement when it comes out for 2020. I'm just very curious because this person was with Beachbody, but to me, I just don't like it. Like she even said, so you will not be employed anymore, quote unquote. She literally was saying, I want to help you so you won't be unemployed. As we see in Beachbody, most people don't make money and we're actually going to look at the income disclosure statement really quickly because I don't like how she says so you won't be unemployed again because when you are employed with an actual job or in an actual position you are earning an hourly wage or a salary you're not having to struggle to get there or struggle to make money and you're making nothing at first but rather spending money because in Beachbody you do have to buy a starter kit you do have to buy products every month to stay active and all of that stuff and I want to look here because what Beachbody actually does for the income disclosure statement is they show their low earnings average earnings and high earnings but they also show the average tenure in years so I want to look at the fact that if you look in the left hand side you can see the ranks and Emerald rank is the first rank that you can hit in Beachbody. That's by signing two coaches up, so two distributors or reps up in Beachbody. If you look at this, the average time someone is generally in Emerald is four years. Within that, 80% of people were emeralds in the year 2019, because again, 2020s isn't out yet for Beachbody. So 80% of people 
were an Emerald coach and they were in that position for four years, okay? The low earnings are $12 and the average annual, meaning in a whole year, is $3,000. You guys know I hate average earnings most of the time because they're not very accurate. They can be very swayed by the high earnings. So I actually wanna look at this when it comes to each month what someone would be getting paid because again, this is yearly. So the $3,000 divided by 12 is 257. So the average Emerald is getting $257 a month. Thing is, with Beachbody, in order to stay active, you have to buy at least $50 worth of products. And with that, you normally have launches coming every month. So you're normally buying that so you can promote those new products. And then on top of that, you generally want to hit what's called Success Club, meaning you have to have $90 worth of product every month. So when you look at your expenses versus only making $257 a month, that's not very much. But again, if we look at the low earnings, some people are only making $12. I don't like that. This isn't a job. This isn't let me help you not be unemployed again. Because if we see here, literally people are sitting at the Emerald Coach rank for four years and 80% of them were in that rank in 2019 and stayed in that rank for 2019. Meaning barely anyone is going to get to those top ranks. So I don't like when they say things like that. I would actually report this person in all honesty. She's trying to make it seem as if you can make that money. But if you did pay attention, and I definitely did, she even had the like income disclosure statement. It was very little, but it said, Team Beachbody does not guarantee any level of success or income from the Team Beachbody coach opportunity. Each coach's income depends on his or her own efforts, diligence, and skills. See our statement of independent coach earnings for the most recent information on the actual income of all of our coaches. So she did put that there, but it's a very small and an itty bitty little space. People probably aren't going to be looking at, so I don't like that it's hidden compared to everything else on her screen. It's very like bold red. So again, I just don't like it. Don't prey on vulnerable people in this time. You may not even realize that's what you're doing, but that's what you're doing. Those, there's actually music on top of it, so I have to walk you guys through it. So she shows, eat this, not that, and a McDonald's sausage biscuit swap. So she's looking like this is disgusting. You shouldn't be eating this is her face when she's looking at the food. She's shaking her head no. And then she goes, eat this. Fixate maple rose Mary biscuit with a fixate breakfast sausage. You guys, look how to, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean, but this looks so nasty. I would rather eat the McDonald's sandwich. I don't like it. Again, this is someone who's very high up with Beachbody. She's a Beachbody super trainer. She actually makes Beachbody's meal plans too. The one that goes in containers. If you guys are curious about that, you can look up this into individual and her meal plans with Beachbody, but I feel a lot of the times she shames people on social media for their food choices. But the reason I have a problem with it is mostly because of how it affects the Beachbody individuals and the Beachbody reps. So you have Beachbody individuals who will look up to this person because they're a super trainer, right? They're your super trainer. They make your programs, they make your meal plans. So you look up to them and then you start to believe like, oh, I shouldn't be eating that. So this is where I actually feel really bad for the Beachbody reps and the distributors because they are shown, oh, Beachbody is this healthy living and something that's a lifestyle. While their workouts may seem like that, their meal plans are not. Then they have their trainers on social media making posts like this that I find could be very guilt trippy. Like I would see a Beachbody coach watching that and second guessing themselves and then going on their social media and saying, oh, you should swap this food for this. You shouldn't be eating McDonald's. And they get into the trap of saying you should shouldn't eat this because it's bad and then you should eat this because it's good. And I'm not the type of person who likes Claire or making food good or bad. I just don't. Food is food. There are some foods that are going to be more nutritious for you and some that aren't. Some that just taste good like I don't know candy and sugar and things like that that taste good but maybe don't give you the most optimal results if you are looking for very optimal results. So I don't like how I see a lot of that good and bad and no in between. Like there's no oh that food's nutritious that's food probably not going to give me what I need. So maybe I should pick the food that's going to give me more because today I worked out and I need to fuel my body right and all of that. Instead, it's no, that's bad. No, this is good. So you should eat this. That's something I don't vibe with. And this is someone who has influence. She has a lot of people following her. And she has all these Beachbody coaches looking up to her. So I just don't like how it messes 
with the Beachbody coaches, I feel. Let's move on to the next one. So this one actually isn't a rep. So this is just an MLM fail to me because this person is an influencer with about 100,000 followers. So they are someone who, you know, has good engagement. They get people who are engaging on their stuff. So they probably get a lot of brand deals and things like that. Well, why don't we look at this? A brand deal with Beachbody because at the top left-hand corner of these stories, you can see where it says paid partnership with Beachbody, meaning this person is getting paid to say this. So let's look at what she says. I haven't worked out in a very long time, an embarrassingly long time. Um, and I thought uh, I should probably start because the other night I was getting up to feed baby and I realized I have no abs anymore. My core is kaput. So I'm going to try Elise Jones bar blend. It's pre and postnatal. Um, it's 30 minutes. It's supposed to be great for beginners, but offers a little bit of a challenge. So yeah, we're going to just try this out and wish me luck. Um, but I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be really good. Okay. So this is where I found the workout. It's Beachbody on demand app. Um, as you can see, they have a bunch of different workouts. They have meditation, nutrition, but we're going to do the pre and postnatal bar blend and everything's kind of broken down into trimesters too. So if you're doing this while you're pregnant, um, yeah, it's super easy, user friendly, but we're going to go to the postnatal workout. Okay. I'm not going to show her actually working out because you know, privacy, I just don't feel like I would want to show her, you know, a brand new mom who is working out. But the thing that I want to point out about this, this is a second person only that I have seen being actually promoted by Beachbody, like Beachbody paying them to talk about that, actually making a brand deal. The first person I seen was Ari, literally the bachelor, the guy who was the bachelor. He's now with that Lauren L chick. They're married. They have kids and twins on the way. I I seen Ari promoting it saying that he was a brand ambassador and it said paid partnership. So I know that Beachbody is now going out of their way to pay. So my theory is they made OpenFit. I've actually made a video on this. If you guys are curious about OpenFit, it's a subsidiary company of Beachbody's, but it's not an MLM, but clearly they're still involved with Beachbody. So I wouldn't support them myself. I don't want to support Carl Deichler in the MLM, but they made OpenFit. And with OpenFit, they have been having influencers promote them like crazy. Shay Mitchell, I've seen influencers. I've just seen so many people promoting OpenFit. So I feel like that was their trial run. Like, oh, and this is, again, just a theory. Like, oh, we're going to go to OpenFit. We're going to try out the influencer marketing, see how many people we can pull in from paying influencers, see if it's worth it, and then move over to Beachbody and start doing that. Because I don't know about you guys, but I've never seen that before. I have never seen Beachbody actually pay someone to promote Beachbody on demand. I've never seen it. I've seen them do ads. I've seen them have their MLM reps, but I've never seen them reach out to influencers and influencers doing an actual paid partnership with them. So my thing is, I think that that's what they're doing. I think they noticed that a smart tactic for brands, not, I don't think it's smart for MLMs, or I guess it is, but it's smart for brands to reach out to influencers and make these deals and make these brand deals because they honestly save a lot more money. When you are a brand and you want to make your own advertisement, you have to pay for a photographer. You have to pay for a set to, you know, set up. You have to pay for all of the things you need for your set. You have to pay for your models. You have to pay for everything, your lighting, the time slots for people. You have to just pay for a lot of things that advertisements can take a hundred thousand dollars just to make. So when you reach out to an influencer for them to promote on their platform with their trusted followers, they will make a lot more money off of that or they will save a lot more money off of that because they only have to pay one person, the influencer. So part of me likes that. I would rather Beachbody move on from an MLM, shut down the MLM structure, stop doing all of that and just pay people. Pay people to promote your brand. But the reason why I dislike it right now is because they're doing both things. So they have these MLM reps who sign up with a starter kit they pay to play then when they get in they have to keep a certain amount of pv every single month and it just is so many things that you have to do in the mlm where you're paying beachbody to essentially promote them with the hopes that you will sign up enough people to make money i don't like that because you guys know i'm not a fan of the mlm structure but that's the problem is they're trying to do both they're saying oh we're going to stay as an mlm we're going to keep scamming all of our distributors right that's my opinion what they're doing is scamming them and then we're going to go pay influencers. Why can't you just pay these reps what they deserve? Like, honestly, a lot of these reps are working their butts off, their tails off. They are working so much that they are, you know, ruining relationships with friends and family, and they don't get the proper compensation for what it is they're doing. But you're going to go find an influencer and you are going to pay them 
but instead take advantage of all of your reps who aren't as familiar with influencer marketing probably don't know that they could be asking Beachbody to pay them so that they can promote their brand. So that's what I get annoyed by is I feel like a lot of people who are smaller in the MLM, you know, at the bottom of the pyramid, they are taken advantage of and they don't realize that they should be being compensated for what it is that they're doing. Like an actual set pay. Like, oh, if I talk about Beachbody today on my stories, I should be doing hashtag ad and Beachbody should be paying me a flat fee to do that. But they don't. And a lot of them feel like you need to have 100,000, 200,000 followers just to get that brand brand deal when in all actuality you can have way less followers than that. So I just don't like to see them dip their toes in both things. Like, yeah, we're going to hire influencers because we think they deserve it, but we don't think our, you know, distributors deserve their actual compensation. We don't feel like they deserve to get paid properly. That's just by looking at it. That's how I feel. How do you guys feel about it? I would be very curious to see what you guys think. I know a lot of people are going to be very mad at the fact that they are doing influencer marketing, but I would just be happy that they would go towards that aspect and literally stop the whole MLM structure because to me that's what I would rather them do. I also think for a brand it's smarter. You save more money by literally paying an influencer than doing your actual advertisement. But if we look at the MLM technically Beachbody is actually making a lot of money off their distributors not spending money right because you have all their distributors who are walking advertisements for them. They are just advertising for nothing. They are literally paying Beachbody every month to stay active and Beachbody doesn't have to pay them a dime at all. You know, they're not getting paid. So for Beachbody, I guess having the MLM, they're taking advantage of people, but for the company itself, for Carl Zeichler, for that CEO, he's probably looking at the numbers like this is smarter. The MLM, like we're not having to pay that much money out, but we're making a lot off these people. But again, I don't like it. I don't like the wishy-washy. I'm doing both things because it just makes me feel like they're looking at these reps as if they're like, nothing like oh you're nothing you don't deserve it like you don't deserve to get paid and i don't think it should be like that i think distributors should be compensated for their work and they should actually be employees so let's move on to the next one we have another monet one i don't know why we have a lot of like monet and beach body ones here's all i'm saying if you are someone who has reached out to me and said that you're interested but then given up on yourself before even trying stop i just knocked over my coffee stop Give yourself the shot. I mean, what if you lose $200 because you give up on yourself, you deserve to lose the $200. I'm sorry. That's just honesty. I made the $200 back in two weeks. Less than two weeks, honestly. A potential call tonight. Come listen. Come see what this company can give you. So that's all I needed you guys to hear. I... I feel like the reps don't realize what it is that they're doing and they don't realize that it's it's not a nice thing to say like, oh, you deserve to lose it because you gave up on yourself. Sometimes people have to quit. They have to quit these MLMs because these MLMs take so much out of a person mentally, physically, emotionally, and most importantly, financially. They take a lot. That doesn't mean that person deserves it. Like you deserve to fail because you gave up on yourself. No, no one deserves that. Like no one deserves to get taken advantage of. No one deserves to be lied to that they are going to be able to make so much money off this fake lifestyle that's promoted on social media. Media, no one deserves that. And to me, it's not being looked at as giving up on yourself when you quit your MLM. A lot of the times it's realizing like, oh, I'm probably not going to make money. So you're just making a smart decision for yourself. So it's just sad to me that she would say that. And on top of that, she did say that she made it back in her first two weeks. So that's a big tactic I hear a lot. You will say what, how quick it was for you to make your money back so that you can try and convince people otherwise. That's more so an income claim to me. She's trying to insist to you that like you can make this money because I'm made it in less than two weeks back. So this is again, something that could be reported. I do want to let you guys know that I always have the link down below for the FTC to report them. I also have a video on how to report to the FTC if you've never done it. These are the type of things you should be reporting when people are talking about income, like, oh, well I made it, you know, in two weeks, you could do it too, or whatever it may be. That's something that could be reported because it gives just this false narrative to people that it's so easy that you're going to be able to join this MLM and make so much money. And then you deserve to lose the money when you quit and give up on yourself. I just find that really sad. Now we're going to move on to the next one. This one, 
<laughs> you guys know me, I'm very empathetic and I, that's just the type of person I am. This one made me giggle and I can't even lie. So small anti MLM angel posted this on her page and it was an MLM rep and they were doing the questions thing on Instagram. If you don't have an Instagram, there's this thing where you can go on your Instagram stories and ask people to ask you questions. Or this person asked her social media, explain how or why you're scared it's a pyramid scheme. So she asked her social media to ask her or explain why they're scared that her MLM's a pyramid scheme. And someone says, how can you make a full-time income just from selling products without recruiting? This woman says, you can't. You'd have to sell a lot of products for that. We're almost there. Like she almost got it. She almost got it because someone asked, or she asked her social media, why are you scared it's a pyramid scheme or explain why or how you're scared. And someone says, like, how can you make a full-time income just selling product because they know you probably can without recruiting, recruiting. And she literally said, you can't. Isn't that a pyramid scheme? Like, isn't that a scam? So let's look at what is a pyramid scheme and how do you spot one on the FTC's website? And we're gonna go to this big sentence right here that literally shows that she essentially just said she's in a pyramid scheme. But it goes, the promoters of a pyramid scheme may try to recruit you with pitches about what you'll earn. They may say you can change your life, quit your job, and even get rich by selling the company's products, but that's a lie. So this person didn't lie. She said you're not gonna, you're not gonna make it very far if you just sell product. And then it goes, your income would be based mostly on how many people you recruit, not how much products you sell. Pyramid schemes are set up to encourage recruitment, to keep a constant stream of new distributors and their money flowing through the business. What I'm going to show is from the anti-MLM advocate and unfortunately someone who is in Monet shared how much money she got. So if you guys have seen Monet people when they get paid, they will show a screenshot of their Mo Money Pay portal, which says like you have received a payment from your Monet Mo Money Pay portal and then it'll show you have received a payment of this much and someone forgot to cover how much money they made and they only made $15. And in their story where they screenshotted this showing they only made $15, they wrote, something I'll never regret is starting an online partnership with Monet that I can control how much I work and how much I make. I was already on Instagram for hours a day. So she goes on her stories trying to say like, I will never regret it, but she only made $15. And that that's not funny to me, but it's sad to me. You want to what? Portray that you're making this money and you'll never regret starting an online partnership with Monet or joining Monet because you can control how much you make and you can do all of this, but you forgot to cover the $15 you made. So what happened if she covered the $15? Was she trying to show that like, oh, I make so much money. I can control what I make. I can make it all. I can make all the money in the world because I started an online partnership with Monet and I can control how much I work and how many hours a day I work. And I made so much money this week, but in all actuality, she did it. I also wanted to point something else out that the anti-MLM advocate said in the caption of this post. It says, honestly, this breaks my heart. Imagine having to pretend to be grateful for receiving a $15 check for what was probably hours and hours of work. You deserve better than that. And I thought I said it in this video when I was filming, but I didn't. And it breaks my heart too. It's really sad to see these MLM reps probably behind the scenes putting in hours and hours and hours of work and not getting compensated for it. I hope that in the future, you know, MLMs can actually compensate their reps and, and give them what they deserve, not having them work and barely making a dime. So that is going to be all for this MLM Fails video. And don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Comment down below which fail did you think was the worst. I want to know which fail did you think was the worst fail of this MLM Fails. Huh. And then don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I upload three days a week, Monday and Friday. I talk about multi-level marketing or scams. And Wednesdays, I post lifestyle videos if you're interested in that. If you are not interested in lifestyle, you can just watch Monday and Friday. And I'll see you in the next one.